Hi, Chris. Hey. Thank you very much for yeah. coming. And why don't you introduce yourself to our viewers? Sure. Uh, so my name is Chris Borchers. I am executive director of the JS Foundation. Uh, so I work at the uh, Linux Foundation in that role. And um, yeah, uh, I uh, used to be, I guess, a uh, uh, software engineer, uh -huh. um, mostly focused on uh, JavaScript for uh, most of my career. So, uh -huh. um, so yeah, and through that have kind of worked my way into a little bit more business uh, focused role where I don't get to write as much code, but it's still so fun. you're mostly interfacing with humans. Yeah, That's absolutely. Tough. That's tough. Okay. <laughs> I feel your pain. OK. So in, what's the, the objectives of the, or the goals of the JS Foundation? Sure. Uh, so our, our main uh, sort of mission is to support uh, and uh, promote the adoption of uh, some of the key open source JavaScript projects. Mm -hmm. um, and so right now we have about 28 different uh, projects. Uh, and it's everything from uh, projects that everyone's heard of, like jQuery, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, newer projects in spaces like IoT with uh, Node-RED and uh, JerryScript, uh, mm -hmm. to uh, projects around uh, serverless application tooling like Architect. Um, so yeah, so we, uh, but our, our main uh, mission is to sort of support those projects and, and promote uh, sort of long-term sustainability for those projects. Well, so it looks like you've been doing a great job because JavaScript is now everywhere. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's left the browser nest and we can find it in server-side programming, even on mobile with React Native and almost everything in between. Absolutely. So uh, what do you think are the next challenges for the JavaScript community? What else can you do? Oh, um, so uh, I think there's, there's a number of, of interesting spaces that are growing. Um, uh, I, I think, like I mentioned before, I think IoT is not, um, people don't necessarily think about JavaScript immediately mm -hmm. when they think, uh, programming microcontrollers. Um, but with projects like uh, JerryScript, which uh, are a JavaScript um, engine for mm -hmm. IoT devices, uh, it's, it's bringing JavaScript into those less traditional places. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so I, I mean, I think, I think IoT is really interesting. Um, I also think, uh, like the, the talk that I was giving today, um, in the uh, sort of payment space, um, uh, JavaScript has has started to to create a, a sort of foothold there as well um, by being kind of the reference implementation, the the language used uh -huh. in the reference implementation yeah. for the interledger protocol. So, um, so yeah, I, I think there's still there's still places where it's mm -hmm. it's growing and and new, but uh, it's. It's finding its way into everything. Cool. Cool if you like JavaScript. Yeah. Well, I do, so. <laughs> OK, perfect. <laughs> and we're happy. And uh, what I was going to ask is actually related to what you just said, because JavaScript was kind of a cornerstone of the first decentralization revolution that was the, the web. And uh, now it looks like it's going to be also part of the, the next wave that is coming with uh, uh, projects like uh, Hyperledger or mm. the Interledger protocol. Or, so that, that's what you think that's the main uh, road to the future for JavaScript? Uh, I mean, I, I definitely think JavaScript is uh, going to play a, a major role in uh, the distributed ledger space. Um, uh, and I think. It already is. Um, there are. Uh, it's. It's getting to the point, especially with advances uh, on the Node.js side, mm -hmm. um, where uh, JavaScript may not have been um, the ideal choice um, because there are, have been, perceived limitations around uh, things like. Um, node only giving you access to the event loop, right? So it, yeah. it appeared to be single-threaded. Mm -hmm. um, but there are projects now 
uh, like, I'm uh, forgetting the name of the project, but um, there are projects out there that are, are actually bringing, uh, giving developers access to multi-threading in uh -huh. JavaScript on the server side. And so by having some of those advancements, mm -hmm. I think we'll definitely see JavaScript playing a bigger and bigger part in uh, different areas like distributed yeah. ledgers, AI, machine learning. Okay. And the Linux Foundation, with, uh, which I believe is kind of the, the umbrella under which uh, the JS Foundation, is, is that correct? Yeah, it's uh, maybe a little more, that's the easiest way mm -hmm. to describe it, yes. Um, the JS Foundation is a, a Linux Foundation project. Um, it is technically still a separate company, uh -huh. um, but we work, uh, we have a partnership with the Linux Foundation. We work really closely with them. Obviously, they employ me to mm -hmm. run the JS Foundation. So, um, so yeah, I think the, the umbrella uh, description is, is accurate, yeah. Okay, and they also uh, kind of support the Hyperledger mm -hmm. protocol, is that correct? So it looks like uh, that's kind of a major your focus, and I thought it was very interesting, this uh, interledger project that you mentioned. You called it a protocol. Is it just a protocol? It's also an implementation? So, so there's uh, multiple pieces to it. So there is the interledger protocol, um, which is a standard that's currently being worked on in a uh, W3C community group. Mm -hmm. um, there is the uh, the other side of that, I guess, is, is what they would call the interledger stack, mm -hmm. um, which uh, the protocol is obviously a piece of that, but yeah. then there are the actual uh, API implementations, and um, uh, interledger JS mm -hmm. is the JavaScript implementation, okay. um, which lives at the JS Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, and then there is hyperledger quilt, mm -hmm. um, is actually the Java implementation of interledger. interledger. Um, and that lives in the Hyperledger project. Okay. Um, so we have overlap there. Mm -hmm. And at which point is it a, considering adoption? Do you think that it's a very early stage? Do you, expect, do you need some heavy adoption from the industry to consider it successful? Yeah, I mean, I think there's definitely, I think it's still pretty early. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there are, really interesting industry use cases that uh -huh. are starting to pop up. Um, like I talked about in, in my session around mm -hmm. uh, Codeus um, yes. and the distributed hosting and, mm -hmm. and having sort of a automatic cross-ledger payment system built into the hosting. Mm -hmm. um, that's interesting. Uh, and then Mojo Loop, uh, uh, bringing, uh, helping bring digital financial services to developing countries. Um, by connecting a lot of their disparate payment systems. Um, That's something that uh, struck me like very interesting and a very beautiful project to get involved because you're, you're, you're changing the lives of many people that have, don't have access to any kind of uh, financial services. But is there, uh, isn't there also a technological barrier in those markets? Because you probably will need some sort of a device or no, what's the so, minimum tech that you need in order to... Um, so it, the, the main target uh, that I'm aware of right now mm -hmm. is, is just feature phones. Um, mm -hmm. So mobile money uh, accounts work on uh, feature phones uh, through uh, really slow internet connections, mm -hmm. text messaging. Yeah. Um, you're able to send money uh, that way. And Mojo Loop is designed to work with those systems. So, um, so yeah, really, it's just a matter of um, th there is still uh, some barrier in mm -hmm. that uh, these individuals need some sort of device. But it definitely does not have to be uh, the, the computer right? in your pocket like we have. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's, uh, it's meant to work with these much simpler, uh, more affordable systems. Oh, okay. um, yeah, so uh, it's, I don't think there's as much uh, of a barrier there now, and, and especially with the different uh, uh, telcos, the, the phone companies, uh, like I mentioned, it's something like 90% now mm -hmm. of the, the um, uh, least fortunate uh, folks in the world are now covered by a mobile signal. So um, 
as long as they can get their uh, get their hands on on some sort of mobile device that can mm -hmm. uh, have be connected to like a mobile money account. And what about currency? Is it a currency independent or? Yeah, so inter Interledger is currency independent. So um, as far as Mojo Loop goes, the, the current focus is not necessarily uh, multi-currency, mm -hmm. um, though it's not, there, it's not being built to prohibit that. Um, okay. Really, the idea right now is uh, connecting these different payment systems, even just within one country, all using the same uh -huh. currency. Um, but there is consideration being made so that the system at some point could work mm -hmm. cross-border, cross-currency. OK, that's definitely fascinating. I had no idea. I just found out about Interledger. And Mojilla was just a few days ago, so it uh, was very interesting, and I really look forward to get some time to dive into yeah, stuff. it's it's a really cool project. It's it was started by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, oh, um, really? yeah, as part of their uh, uh, level one project, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, they I've just been kind of advising them on on some of the, the open source side of things, yeah. Um, and yeah, I've just been kind of pulled into it because it's it's an amazing cause and it's uh, and the technology is is awesome at mm -hmm. the same time so it's just it's been really fun awesome well thank you very much it was a real pleasure thanks for your time yeah Coming from so no. far away no thank you for inviting me this is great thank you very much Chris hope yeah. to see you soon thanks back a lot. here in, in Spain awesome